Abby. This is Abby Matt Reads. I told you I would bring you a different library every week. This library is the Admont Library in Admont, Austria. And your facts for it, which I will give you facts for the library every week, are that this library is located in the foothills of the Alps. It was designed by architect Joseph Huber in 1776. And it is the second largest monastery library in the world. Ooh. Okay, so today I will be reviewing The Poison Bed by E.C. Fremantle. Um, she has released books previously under Elizabeth Fremantle. And I've always found them a bit hit and miss. So let's see how much I love this one. And spoiler alert, loads. I loved it loads. Oh, just before I start, I would like to say that if you are new and you are curious about my channel, to please subscribe because it would mean a lot to me. Uh, it would make me very happy and it would help this tiny little channel grow just a tiny bit more, which is always a good thing. We are taken straight into the action and brought back to 1615 where Francis Howard of the Howard family is being arrested for murder. A mob of angry people bathe for her blood during her journey from her luxurious home to the formidable Tower of London. Her husband, Robert Carr, is already imprisoned there for the same crime, and although it is not stated who they were supposed to have murdered yet, under interrogation, Francis immediately confesses and pleads her husband's innocence, all the time thinking that he might have done the same for her. During their imprisonment, the chapters alternate between Francis and Robert, and it goes back and tells the story of how they met, fell in love, and eventually got married. We learn that as a Howard, Francis has had a very privileged upbringing, but Robert Carr was an orphan, and in his words, someone of low birth, but has risen very high and is a favourite in the court. The narration goes into fascinating detail over the lives and links of noble and royal families. And it seems Robert really has risen. He is the king's favourite, which by the looks of it kind of means that he is the king's sexual partner. Um, it's King James I and Robert just simply refers to him and calls him by his given name, James. Although there is a person in Robert's life who is not exactly thrilled about this and how far it has gone. When Robert meets Frances, he falls in love with her straight away, even though at the time she is still technically married to the Earl of Essex. Frances was married to the Earl of Essex when she was just 14, when then Essex went away to continue his education. In the tower, Frances recollects of how when they finally met again after all those years, Essex came back with his face ravaged by smallpox and his demeanour had changed to be rude, cold and aggressive, sometimes abusive. All the characters are really fleshed out, very three-dimensional and believable and despite all the controversy that surrounds everything they do, Francis and Robert appear to be very nice people and are very likeable. The character that strikes me the most is Northampton, Francis's great uncle. The character that strikes me the most is Northampton, Francis's great uncle, the man who moves all the pawns. He is formidable and forceful and the head of the Howard family. It is Northampton who convinces a very willing Francis to set her eyes on marrying Robert Carr due to the fact that her marriage with Essex has never been consummated due to his impotence with her. He believes that this will be a good move for the family as everyone knows that Robert is King James's favourite, although obviously Northampton has no idea to which that favouritism stretches. He could also have no idea what a tragic move this could turn out to be. Although it takes a while to get going, this book is worth it. The writing is beautiful. She really knows how to set a scene and the whole book is littered with such stunning similes. The few things that keep you hooked from the beginning are Robert's complicated love and sex life of which you are supposed to draw your own conclusions from. 
Also, the fun of trying to guess constantly who was murdered distracts you from the early on slow pace. Although when Francis's remembering switch from first to third person a few times during the book, it is a bit disorientating. This story is about passion, passion for love and sex and power. And how the various characters demonstrate what they are willing to do to obtain it. There is also an undercurrent to the story of of death, sorcery, the dark arts, and destiny, an undercurrent that keeps the book moving. Then part two comes and spins the whole book on its head. The second part of the book reads more like a historic thriller. It's faster and more charged, and the attention shifts from Robert to Francis. Reality is distorted, and from page to thrilling page, which you'll race through, you'll finally find answers and little things will just start clicking into place with like shocking revelations. Following such stark accounts of manipulation, madness and descriptions of such strong emotions is breathtaking and the ending is amazing. I could not have picked a better ending for this book. It is extremely fitting. And with that, I give The Poison Bed 4.5 4.5 stars out of 5. That's it for my review. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button below. That that always makes me happy when I get a few likes. Gives me, ooh, yeah, I'm just so happy about that. And again, if you are new and you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more of this, then click subscribe just to help my channel grow a little bit more. You can find me on Twitter at, at abbymattreads. Or I have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Abby Matt Reads. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I enjoyed making it and it was nice to see you again. Bye.